and a multi coup officer cannot be sued for whatever he does in the course of duty, but only what he does in his personal capacity, so says the Ekiti State Security Network Agency Bill 2020, which has been submitted to the Ekiti State House of Assembly. It also states that a fine of 250,000 naira or a prison sentence of one month or both will be the repercussion of assaulting an Amate Kung officer. Now, joining me to discuss this deal in the studios is Lulu Elegbe and also Evans Ufeli. Yes. What is your reaction to this? Because it seems every, everything that seems to protect the officer and nothing is said about the people. Yeah, Evans. Th this, is, this is one of the ways we have. This is a very bad uh, draft uh, man's uh, um, production because um, you have uh, um, a traditional, uh, let me not say traditional now, talking about uh, the Amoteku, which is supposed to be a force or um, a security outfit that is supposed to provide intelligence. And now, in your draft, you have immunity for them, OK? And you are throwing that open uh, to society that they have immunity uh, while they are in the course of their duty. Now, I've read that part. I've read other subsection. I've not seen where you have another provision that talks about in the case where this immunity is abused, what happens? So once I'm on duty, I can abuse the privilege on duty. So that, if, if you must give immunity, you must stretch it further such that where you have a general rule, okay, there must be several exceptions to guard against the person whom you are going to. And this should also inform the kind of training you should give them. There must be quality people, human capital. Because if you uh, provide this kind of uh, provisions of law, and then the persons you are going to use to enforce or to work as operatives and not quality uh, people, you are going to have problems. All right, Lolo, before I take your, your thoughts on this, we, we have a video. Take a look. That this will be given accelerated discussion in our various state executive council this week and would also send it expeditiously to our various houses of assembly this week. Our discussions with our speakers who have been really waiting for this, some of them are even recalling their honorable members from recess in order to give this an accelerated passage. And to that extent, it is a logical extension of the community policing initiative that President Muhammad Buhari has accented to, that the Inspector General of Police has already communicated to the various formations of the police. Okay, now I'm also concerned in one of, on one of the provisions where it states that an Amotekun officer cannot be sued for whatever he does in the course of duty, but only what he does in his personal capacity. And he has drawn a very strong concern. In the course of you ex um, exercising your duty or carrying out your duty, what, where, where's the line? Where's the line where we know, okay, you've not, you've not, you've not started abusing the, the powers conferred in you? Yeah, I think that's the, I, that's the problem with, with immunity generally. Immunity is, it opens the door to abuse too many times. I understand the need for immunity, not, I mean, yes, I'm not talking specifically, but generally, I understand okay. the need for immunity. It allows someone to just get on with the job without having to worry about lawsuits and things like that. But we need to, we need to understand our own context as a nation. Where you say someone has immunity, it just opens the door to all sorts of things. Now, you're setting up the security outfit in a country where one of the biggest complaints about the security agencies is the abuse of civilians. Yes. And then you set up a new security agency, and one of the first things you point out in the new, in the new law is the fact that they have immunity from anything they do in the while, course of their duty. Exactly, while, while carrying out their duty. That already sends a signal to the public that these people 
um, that these guys can do pretty much whatever they want. It also sends a signal to whoever is joining Amotekun that I'm above the law because nobody can sue me. I can do whatever I want. And you, and inevitably, you hear statements like, I can do X, Y, Z to you and nothing will happen because the law backs them up. It's yes. quote unquote, it's legal. So they can do whatever they, they so that I don't understand the logic behind it. So it's like, like he said, I, and I agree with that, that if you, if you have that there and then you now come to a part where if an Amotekun person is abusing his power or abusing um, his, his authority, mm. X, Y, Z are the penalties for that. But I, I, have, I certainly haven't seen that. So it's, it just seems like, I think like you pointed, like you rightly pointed out, it just seems like the emphasis is on protecting the Amotekun people, yes. which yes, the government should, but then what about the public? Because the reason why you set up this outfit in the first place was to give the public more confidence about security. Yes. But then when you bring these guys in, and the first thing you're saying is that they, they, the, the simple meaning of that, let's not mince words, is that these guys can do whatever they want. That's what it boils down to. And they will, and the minute you tell them they have immunity, they will do whatever they want. And that already defeats the purpose of what you're trying. I'm, I think Amoteku is a fantastic idea. I do, yeah. But when you now start putting these sorts of things without the counterbalance of that to, okay, this is what happens when you abuse civilians, then you're opening the door for so many problems that I hope don't happen. But as long as that remains in the law, it's, it's inevitable that it will happen. Because already this seems like, Evans, this seems already like a faulty bill. Well, I mean, yeah, with yeah, all of these yeah, provisions yeah. in it. As it stands now, <laughs> yes. I, I hope the State House of Assembly, because it's an executive bill, yes. mm. I hope when it is taken to the State House of Assembly, this conversation will arise. But it was breaking if, news earlier on that the Ogun State government has already approved. They both no, no, already yeah, approved. No, yeah, yes. that is the executive yes. approved to send to the House of As Assembly. It's, a, it's an executive bill. Yes. So the houses of assembly of each of the states in the Southwest, they are going to sit on this. Okay, the draft is from the executive and then look at it. But if you look at it generally, okay, the, the state government in the Southwest, they already into the same mistakes that the federal government have made over the years on security. Are you, are you sensing the haste I'm seeing here? What is this haste for? Are we at war? I mean, Amoteku is fantastic. It's a good idea. Because for the first time in Nigeria, you are going to engage community people to police their communities. Before now, we have a federal police force where a man is taken from Kano, he grew up in Kano, he's sent to Lagos to police a community. And that is lopsided. But that this is the first time that we're having a proper community policing arrangement where the people will police their communities. Now we're coming up with laws of this nature, but the haste is just too much. We must be able to look at these issues clearly. This, this immunity, I think they should take it out. Because even the conventional police force <laughs> does not have this kind of immunity. The only thing they have is what is in Section 33. The only thing close to it is what is in Section 33, uh, where it talks about right to life. And then when it talks about the, the exception to right to life, that when you are resist arrest and a policeman pulls the trigger at that level, the policeman cannot be charged. Okay, that's the only thing close to this. But here, where you are having an express provision that it cannot be sued first, that you know, and all that. And you know that the quality of human person you intend to use, mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't think that there are graduates that are going to be employed for this purpose. I, I don't know. But uh, if you have people of low qualification, low intellectual capacity, to design wrong and right, to uh, understand the sociological dimension of society. If you bring them into this thing and you are giving them this kind of uh, immunity, I hope we don't compound the problem. Yeah. All right. That's my word. Now, again, the bill for the states that the security organization must be headed by a retired law enforcement agent who is not lower than the rank of a major or is equivalent in other security agency. Is this what it should be? Well, they, they, they are looking at experience, okay? It's a certain level of experience and security should play out. Uh, a retired person who is of this, but uh, when you say major, the rank of a major, right? Or it's equivalent, yes, or it's equivalent. in other 
security uh, it, it means agency. that uh, some a uh, major for example have considerable knowledge of security it is presumed he has considerable knowledge of security and the operations that is what i think they are trying to do there but i also think that that should not just be the primary uh, qualification uh, education should come in yes. i mean you can have a major that is not a uh, so let's get people who are educated first let them be graduates uh, of any field then maybe this one uh, should be added to it and then and then let it be retired officers who after they've left the forces have updated their knowledge of security not just because we like this permanent and it just uh -huh, give them and all that so let's 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 look at it that yeah. way now, now Lulu, like he rightly pointed when he was speaking i'm, I'm concerned about now the, the recruits the people who are going part of this but we're not privy to the kind of training they will be exposed to and where they are not adequately trained then we can't totally exonerate the fact that other civilians will be abused by the same people who are meant to protect and um, secure them. So what should be paramount for the state governors at this point in time, given the, the, um, the, what they have contained in this bill? Yeah, I think, I think training is key because, and I agree, I, I agree with what you said, but I think the issue, remember that this is, this is being set up as a community police, yes. quote unquote. And the, the idea is not to replace the conventional police, police. but to supplement their work. And um, I think there was in AKT a couple of weeks ago where, even though they haven't officially launched, um, where um, some people were apprehended and then handed over to the police. So that's really what they'll be doing. So regardless of that, though, the, if, if this thing works the way it should, these people, A, will be peop members of the communities that they reside in, so they have institutional knowledge of those communities, first of all. So instinctively, they know who is likely to be a criminal. They know, I mean, they've, I'm sure they've heard the rumors. Yeah. They know this person is this kind of person, that person is that kind of person. So like you said, when you, when you bring policemen from Kano, from Sokoto, you bring them to Ibadan, or you take a policeman from Enugu and you take him to Medugu, it doesn't make sense to me. But having something like this, this is why I think Amoteku is a very good idea. But the other side of that is that no matter how good an idea this is, if these people are not given the right level of training, then this is only going to make the, the security problem worse. Because what is con that immunity clause in this bill is already going to create problems. Yeah. I can tell you that for free. It will, co it will cause problems. And regardless of the intellectual capacity of the people that join um, the group, and I think I read somewhere that um, policemen, soldiers, and other people are they're actually open to join the group as well if they want to. So my issue is not so much the intellectual capacity of the people joining, is more an understanding of what their role is. Because even if you get the starkest illiterate you can find, as long as he understands that this is my job, and these are the consequences of not doing my job right, then I think he'll be able to step up and do that, especially if he's somebody within the community. But if you're telling him before he even starts the job that he can pretty much do whatever he wants, so then even if the person is a graduate with a PhD and you tell him that, oh God, this is your, this is, this is your job, this is your baton, I think they, they wrote to the IG to get weapons as well. Yeah. These, are, these are your instruments of duty but you can do whatever you want. Then that's a recipe for disaster, I think. Evans, any further thoughts? <coughs> yeah, I, what I think uh, we should add to this whole thing is that the quality of human person, human capital development is key. I mean, uh, uh, aside from the law, uh, the law is going to regulate humans. These humans are Nigerians. Security is a delicate issue. We must be able to you know, do the right thing. And then remuneration. If you are bringing it into a Moteku arrangement, because I've been hearing this voluntary, there is one narrative. Is the voice is so tiny into the whole Amoteku arrangement that these people were voluntary, voluntary, and all that. And it's, it's a problem because it, 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 you know, you know, like 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 it is said that when you when you allow the priest yeah. to go hungry for too long, yeah. he said he will convert the Holy Communion to biscuits. <laughs> so if you if you if you do not give them good pay for this assignment, they may take those arms and begin to extort because we already have that precedent. We already have the precedent, and we shouldn't allow the Amoteku to cross from solution into problem. 
Evans Ophelia, legal practitioner, and Lulu and Legbe, political analyst. Thank you very much for being part of the show this evening and Thank for you. your contributions. Our plush report is coming up now. Afterwards, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The All Progressives Congress, APC, has set up a National Reconciliation Committee headed by its founding interim national chairman, Bisi Akonde. The national chairman of the party, Adams Oshomole, said the inauguration of the committee is a follow-up to deliberations agreed during the last National Executive Committee meeting of the party. The committee is comprised of about 12 members, many of whom are founding members of the party. It is traditional for progressive parties to engage in internal contestations, arguments, disagreements, etc. There is nothing wrong with those. And if we have a party where you do not have divergent views, something must be wrong. It can only become a problem where we are not capable to forge agreement after disagreement. And particularly when there is no question that we all subscribe to a shared set of values which bind us together as members of the All Progressive Congress. As your excellencies may recall, at the last National Executive Council meeting, one of the key decisions that was taken at the next meeting, as earlier proposed by the CACOS, was to set up a national committee under the supervision of Mr. President to ensure that we make effort wherever there is any form of disagreement or misunderstanding or communication gap to make effort to reconcile those involved so that the party can continue to enjoy <laughs> eternal cohesion and renew vigor as we prepare to support the governments elected on the platform of our party between now and the next election. That is the governors in all the states that is controlled by our party. And of course, the president of the Federal Republic, President Muhammad Buhari, who is elected on the platform of the APC. In the society of the imbeciles, there is no argument. We are neither angels nor imbeciles in the APC, and it was not surprising to us that as we move along to confront the mountain burden of economy, of uh, insecurity, and of corruption in the country, definitely there will be a lot to argue about. I feel humbled to be asked to be part of the committee that will resolve this crisis. At first, I feel trembled. But when I read the names of my other colleagues in the committee, I become emboldened and I feel happy that we are certainly going to do a very good job for the progress of this party. On behalf of all the members of the committee, the National Reconciliation Committee, Mr. Chairman, we accept to serve. I think politicizing the issue of national security by some group of do no good among our political elite is much dangerous and poses a serious threat and concern to the challenges facing our dear country today. There is an urgent need for all Nigerians to unite and support the efforts of both the federal and state governments towards fighting crimes such as insurgency, banditry, kidnapping and robbery, amongst others. And that's a wrap on the show tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow by 7 p.m. Stay well.